Welcome sales team leaders to Steam Room online. This is, uh, goodness me, session six. Uh, today, the theme, the thing that we're going to be discussing uh, a little bit later on in the, uh, the show, if you want to call it that, is basically uh, the scoreboard and um, probably one of the most important instruments that we have inside what we teach at uh, corporate managers steam which is about sales team leadership and and the best way to actually control the team going forward just around the traps um, in terms of training with your sales people uh, over uh, this uh, week that we have going and then what we will have going next week is basically inside of <clears throat> um property careers and the PC3M program with the individuals, we've actually moved them uh, along to a Thursday where we're doing the PC3M stuff. And that's fundamentally so that we can get them set up for the week ahead. And, you know, they can just burst into Monday being okay. And it makes it easier in and around the sales team leaders that are basically uh, have them on their on their teams, and the same with the real estate rock stars. You know, I mean, if we've got them uh, lining up, notwithstanding the fact that in most instances the real estate rock stars are jumping on with the individual salespeople, and that's just working a treat. But fundamentally, what we've been teaching them this week in and around their prospecting dialogue, because. Uh, <laughs> A, a downplay with most of the stuff that's going on in and around lockdown is many salespeople are kind of treating it like it's a, a break or a holiday or a vacation or something like that. And we want to avoid this completely. And what I've been saying to the salespeople is not so much, and the, sorry, the sales associates, but also it was a theme that carried into sales trainer last week if you listen to the recording that we did there for list and sell online we were just talking about what the dialogue or the format that you should be following especially as it relates to your sales inquiry log so so the the two are kind of intertwined but what we were saying to those uh sales associates ahead of prospect of four hitting the ground is that basically what you've got to do is rather than stepping back from it and as we've said the whole way through inside of um, inside of the COVID and, and, and the lockdowns is, you know, you can either run from it, which a lot are doing by taking these forced breaks or grabbing their holidays and all that sort of thing, or you can run at it. And in running at it, look at the opportunity that exists. I think the scenario provides an outstanding situation for a lot of, sales associates and indeed sales people opportunity in that you know you can forge a fairly steady relationship now i'm the first to tell you that no matter what you do or say whilst these lockdowns are on there's going to be a smattering of sellers that are going to want to back off but it, but what i'm trying to get the sales associates to see is they have to see themselves as the, the prospects those active property sellers that you're seeking out as they see us, and this becomes probably the key to winning their favor. So often salespeople just, if, if I'm to put it into perspective, they jump on when they're following up sales inquiry log. First mistake is fairly simple, and this is one you just need to be aware of as a sales team leader, is that they focus on the more recent sales inquiry. Now, I'm not saying don't follow that up. I'm not saying that a lot of those do convert over. I'm, yes, there are definitely sellers there. But the vast majority of sellers, at least, are not jumping on board with agents straight away. You know, there's a little bit more of this as we move forward. And I talk about a couple of the other products that we, that we have available and we're pushing forward. But it, it doesn't matter how you look at it now. The sales, uh, active property sellers are becoming way more sophisticated. They are opting to do their own research. It's not as easy as it was to coerce them to come to the market. So you've got to win their favor in another way. But in, invariably, salespeople are still typically moving from qualifying 
a prospect straight into wanting to get down there and do some type of quasi presentation, albeit that it's framed up quite often as a market appraisal. And they want to get down there, you know, do you want me to give you an idea on price? And even if they do come down there, even if they're, they are able to secure the opportunity to go down to the property, they invariably then turn up with the CMA and want to get into the pricing argument. I'm not saying that motive isn't in, entered into, but it's almost like an afterthought ahead of those three. So if you're taking notes on this and you want, you know, some, some great tips to get your salespeople headed in the right direction, it's very simplistic, notwithstanding the fact that you should, you should be pushing them straight across uh, and, and over to uh, the PC3M program where we'll sort them out anyway. But basically what I say, I'm saying to uh, sales associates is, when you're going back into that sales inquiry, just go back at least four weeks to as long as, you know, really 12 weeks. So it's the, anything that's at least a month old to as old as three months. That's where you're going to get the best yield. You're going to get the best turnover. Focus on qualifying them in the first instance. Once you've qualified, identify the motive, then move to making the, contra, uh, the, the conversation completely centric around motive very, very quickly. You know, uh, where are you coming from? Where are you looking at moving to? This the, the questions you want to ask. If it's a little cold, if it's a hard to solicit it out, I say, look, if you could move, if you could, where would you move to? When might that be? So the, the conversation has to be centric around that. From that, we'll typically develop the opportunities to offer advice. So if people say, look, I'm going to buy something or I need to find something first before I put my property on the market. You know, I've taught these sales associates this over and over again. They just move to, well, what if you do find something? If you do find something, doesn't that then mean that you're going to be in an anxious position because you're going to possibly own two properties at the same time? And I'm sure you know the language around that. So I'll just give you that very, very simplistically when you're talking to your sales people and sales associates indeed about prospecting back through those sales inquiries, or even if they're just talking to people cold on the back end of anything, any form of prospecting that they're doing, qualify first, identify the motive, make the conversation around the motive, so all centric to the motive, then move into an advisory role, advice. From there, you can then start to I guess, demonstrate your products, talk about the solutions solutions that you have. And this should invariably lead to an invitation down there. And then, of course, a presentation. As crazy as this sounds, the analogy that I'm giving them over and over again, stay away from the idea. I don't know if any of you have actually seen that film, The Castle, when um, uh, you've got Dale Koenig in there and um, he, his mate Farouk, and they're talking about going to, 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 to court and Farouk pulls out the cash and he says, what is it with wogs and cash? Put the cash away. I believe it's the same when we're prospecting. Don't focus on the presentation. Put your instinct to actually lean toward the presentation away. Sit there as a giver of advice around an advisory role. The presentation will come. So I'm saying to all of these associates, you need to be engaging in conversations around this context over the lockdown period. As, of, as we come out of lockdown, those active property sellers will lean towards the salespeople that have had the conversation, been giving them good advice. And in the first instance, been talking in an upbeat fashion, talking them off the wall. Everybody's fed up with this entire scenario as it relates to COVID and what it's done, and then just get that out of the way. It's uh, at sales trainer, as I said, we've been talking about the same thing, particularly as it rate, relates to the sales inquiry log, notwithstanding again, that a lot of the sales associates are working directly with salespeople. But those salespeople that are in traction, they're getting a lot of sales inquiry off their listings. And this is where they need to focus. If you're struggling with listing opportunities, for goodness sake, direct your salespeople to put all of their energy into people that have into, you know, basically the sales inquiry that you've been receiving over the last several months. This is where the active property sellers are that have been researching the market ahead or at least looking to fulfill their motive on the other end. I'm here, and look, we've had unprecedented numbers of inquiries on properties as they come up. 
And I'm just seeing over and over again that we are not properly processing the inquiry that we've received. And I'll put this into context for you as sales leaders. You're, you're, you're most likely in the company and most of us these days with the, with the advent of, you know, more sophisticated marketing and advertising mediums, we're spending an unprecedented amount of money of the client's money in them investing in advertising and marketing and of our companies, we're spending a whole lot of money to get the phones to ring, to get that inquiry coming in, to get the attendees to the welcome homes. And we're just like pushing it behind us and looking for the stuff as it comes up rather than going back and recognizing that a lot of these sellers were not right when that initial inquiry was received. And if you're processing this correctly, you're going to have a wealth of them coming through. I can quote, I can cite for you numerous ones that I've done, even just today. I have one um, team inside of our real estate rock stars that there's two of them working together. And we've just set a precedent of a listing presentation every single day, including the days off. So that's 30 listing presentations that we are pushing for. Now, They've, they've been privy with their listing base to 1,600 inquiries that are centric to the properties that are in their service area over the last four months. So we're going into those inquiries exclusively with those 1,600 and we only want to get 15 listings this month and that's where the energy is focused. That's what we're pushing on and that's where we know we're going to find the sellers. Now, I'm happy to report we're at the seventh of the month right now and they've done seven listing presentations and they've got them all clued up for, 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 for most of this week going forward. There's a couple of holes there, but that's what we're focused on and what you focus on grows and that's the energy that we're driving in and around that. In terms of training, most of the energy this month in, and in its um, sales trainer is going to be pushed in to the list presentation, notwithstanding that in a second, I'm going to talk about property marketer and what we're doing to bring listing pad up to date and get that out into the marketplace. Cause I'm again, recognizing that the majority of problems that occur inside of a real estate transaction are emanating from the listing presentation. So we're, we're putting a lot of energy into that. We're mitigating any of the problems that we're having with a reluctance to invest in marketing this will become tougher as markets start to become oversupplied. Property sellers will be less inclined to be pushing uh, money or investing in marketing. So we have to show you how to get around that. Um, at the corporate manager level at Cream, which uh, again, if you jump on this time next week, you'll see us talk about that. And I'll be talking about how you start to set up ahead of any change in the market and look at, you know, marketing levies and marketing being paid only in the event of a sale and all those sorts of things. So you do not burden the company uh, and that it's not double. It doesn't have salespeople double dipping on them, especially those salespeople that have that propensity to give it away. In fact, with one of the um, agencies we're working with now, and I start this Friday, we're spending the next three months in completely reconciling, reintroducing the presentation around marketing to uh, push for them to get their recoverables. They've, they've got about 80% going out the door and 20% they're recovering. We wanna flip that around on its head because I can almost certainly tell you wherever there are concessions around marketing, there is invariably concessions uh, around fee. So wherever I see their marketing is being reduced or given away, you can almost certainly back it in that there's going to be fee discounts prevalent as well. And we're looking to eradicate them. What's the key to eradicating it? It's very, very simplistic. Focus on the solution, adding value, get that out the front, train salespeople to sell instead of actually just sitting there and looking at a problem. And if you build that skill base up, it's a very simple sell. I say all to all the salespeople, is it worth learning? Of course, they come back with yes. And you've just got to, you know, you can't do it overnight. You've just got to run that training so that you get to a particular day where you can turn it around to your advantage. So that's the thing that we're doing. That's what we're very much focused on inside of 
sales trainer, the list and sell. Um, there's going to be specific sessions on marketing. I'm sorry, on the listing presentation this month, where it'll be like a good three to four, maybe even five or six hour session. These will be done once a month. They're on top of the regular sessions that are done each week. And they'll probably be done on a Wednesday, which is usually when we do the sales trainer mentor stuff. So anyone that's enrolled in, enrolled in sales trainer mentor, they can come to that for free. But if you've got salespeople that you want to get some solid listing training in with, please get in contact with me and you can get them along to those sessions on top of the ones that they see on Friday for free. The real estate rock stars, they're all focused on their best month ever. Some of you as sales team leaders, I've just knocked you right between the eyes at the beginning of this month and said, look, just is there any problem that you've got inside the real estate business that we can't solve with a quick 10 sales, which then tracks us back to a quick 10 or a dozen listings, 15 listings, whatever it is. And I'm doing the same with the sales, with those in the real estate rock star program. And I've just said to them, look, forget all the stuff. We've done all the training. We know what you're good at. Why don't we just get the dynamics of the team totally focused on getting a best month ever. For most of them, it's uh, knocking on the door, if not close to double figure listings or over the top on that. And we're looking at getting, you know, it is September and I know some of us are in lockdown, but the total focus is just, let's get a whole lot of listings on board what a nice problem to have this side of Christmas as we're, we're moving forward. A property marketer, we're still not finished with um, Prospect of Four, but we are now seeing is particularly those that are stuck in lockdown. And, and even if you're not in lockdown right now, I'd like you to set up in an anticipative fashion and be prepared if you have to, uh, to move into area and just assume that lockdown could come at any time, which this is the same thing. I mean, even, even here in New South Wales, we're told that this will free up at the end of this month. But I've got everyone, I'm saying, look, just expect them to extend it by another month. Why? Because if we learn how to operate around this obstacle, it can only get easier. But if it doesn't, we're okay. So I'm constantly saying to leaders, and you've got to pass this on and operate this way in and around your salespeople, expect the worst. Yep. Expect the worst and just hope for the best. Yeah. Instead of actually sitting back and just hoping that it's going to be, a, you know, vice versa. I'm sure you know what I mean. So I'm expecting it to actually keep going and I'm ready for it. So if it gets easier, so be it. We're still ready the same way around. So that's what we were doing. That, so what we're doing in, in and around the lockdown is we're focusing on two view as a platform that allows us to promote these properties in an off-market manner. In some areas of, of, well, in Melbourne at least, they're in lockdown, they can't even show properties. You know, so we're even getting the owners of properties to run, to do their own photography and sometimes, some cases their own videos, of course, with their, with their iPhones. And then we're pushing those visuals into the TwoView platform and then utilizing that to make the connection with buyers. More than ever before, I'm saying to uh, salespeople that you need to actually build your log of buyers and you need to present those specific buyers to any prospective seller before they come on the market because you don't want your competitor getting under your guard by saying, I've got just this one, get them through. And then you're losing your listing. Sometimes that property is undersold with this off-market caper. You could have actually gotten more, but they just fall for the trap of believing that that buyer was exclusive to somebody else. And of course, we're also preparing, as I just mentioned before, the listing pad platform. So we're putting a lot of work into that to get that up and away. Now, of course, it's, it's Steam, it's Steam Shop. From we move from there, Steam Shot, this is Steam Room, but Steam Shot is where we're meeting with the individual sales team leaders each week and planning their week ahead. So this month, ahead of the, the, the proper introduction next quarter, we're dealing with all of the habits that you need to have on a daily basis, then a weekly basis, then certain parts of the month. So what you need to do on the 10th, what you do in mid month, what you do around the 20th, so that you move from a reactive disposition, which I see many sales team, team leaders in where they're constantly reacting to the environment as it deals with it. 
you'll never overcome that because we can't always predict the changes that occur in real time. But we want to be, we want to get our behaviour into a proactive disposition, particularly as it relates to listings. So you want to be able to move into each month and forecast with clarity and with confidence just how many listings you're going to get before the month starts, or at least understand or be able to identify the shortfall. Do something about that to turn it to your advantage. So that's, that's the major focus that we're doing. So at the moment, we're dealing with what you do on a Monday. So what you do to get in, to get the engine started on an almost weekly basis. Next week, we'll be dealing with the sales meeting and all of the specifics that need to come out of that as a regular basis. And we're looking to build this into habit forming stuff. The week after, of course, we'll deal with what happens on a Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, what happens on game day, which of course is, might be your Saturday and or your Sunday, or sometimes we've got midweek open for inspections or welcome homes as we call them, how you engineer them, how you control them, all of the matter that you do as a sales team leader so that you can come in on a daily basis and know exactly what you should be doing to encourage and lead a team through all sorts of terrains, all sorts of conditions, and then control it. So more on that as we go. And then now I just move to the, the theme for today, which of course is the scoreboard. And what I'm talking about is the sales control board. And I want to talk to you about the facets that you need to have up. So often I'll ring a sales team leader, I'll say, how are you tracking or how many your listings are you on? And they're like, oh, hang on a sec. And they're kind of counting them in their head or trying to figure out or rifling through a diary or something like that. This is just insanity. You need to have, in the same way as when you get in the car, you need a speedometer, you need to see a fuel gauge, you need to see the temperature of the motor and everything that's going on. So that when you sit in the cockpit and you are driving that vehicle, you know that you have everything you need to get you from one point to the other safely in all types of terrains. You need to know the wipers work. You need to know all those bits and pieces that you may need any of that instrumentation, not just to show you a measure, but also to flick the switch to make adjustments so that you make the journey in a safe manner. This is the same inside of a real estate business. I think it was Vince Lombardi who said very clearly, if winning isn't everything, why do they have a scoreboard? Think about that. So you need a scoreboard, but you don't want to measure things that are detrimental to the practice of the agency. And I'll get there in just a second, but to my mind, and you've got to remember the theme that we have in and around STEAM, in and around sales team leadership is, you know, and if I'll just move through these, not just quietly, just reiterating it. At the property careers level, level we are teaching sales associates foothold, how to break into a market or how to rejuvenate a market. At the sales trainer level, sales trainer mentor, we're getting sales professionals and we're showing them how to get traction in their market and build market share. So this always operates on the assumption that they have a smattering of listings or they have been listing properties or they have a foothold into the market. When we move into real estate rockstar, this is all about momentum. You've already got market share and you're just controlling it, albeit that you might be moving it up marginally or maybe taking on a brand new market. So doubling the size of your market. At the sales team leadership level, this is where you guys are sitting right now. It's about automation. It's about you taking total control of the business, of the existing customers as they come in and controlling those nicely and the procurement of new business and new customers coming in. You want to control this as well. And I say the rise to automation is only realized when measurement equals expectation. I'll say that again. The rise to automation is only realized when measurement equals expectation. So you can measure where you're expecting to be and you can see that this is materialized. And this is where the scoreboard comes into place. 
and most almost invariably, and I'll just get this up now so that you can all have a look at it and I'll be walking you through this. Oh, just get my little screen floater up. Yeah. And here we have what we call the steam cockpit. The steam control cockpit. And it is basically, uh, hang on, I'll just get this. Oh. I'm sorry, folks, I just need to get self organized here on the play. Oh, I've forgotten where I do this. Yeah, it must be here. No. All right, here we go. So this is basically the um ooh, the steam control cockpit. And I'll just point you through or walk you through each facet as we go. The um the top end, now you'll notice that the, the very first thing I want to point out to you in and around the, the cockpit is it's very simplistic. There's only certain numbers we need to focus upon. I can almost tell you beyond any exception, the downfall of most um, uh, sales teams, if you like, and definitely the, the, the blockage to production is typically amplified by salespeople that are more focused on the dollars that they're creating rather than fulfilling their capacity. In other words, they look at the dollars they're producing rather than looking at the numbers that they are capable of producing. So often I see this, and this has always been a problem with the advent of uh, commissions going up. So the one thing I do not want on a control board is the number of dollars that they bring in. I would prefer them to focus on the number of listings and sales that they can do and how these materialize. So very simplistically, the first port of call on focus is the listings to get. As we say, GML, the most important function that you can have being created inside your real estate business is that of getting more listings. So as listing presentations are done, the addresses need to be coming up here. This then becomes a focal point, one that's on public display. It allows you to ask questions around where we're up to with each of them. Over time, you can develop a key. There's more on that. We teach that inside of Steam, where you can actually have a very simple legend that sits beside it to say that, you know, they've, we've been through the presentation, they've received something like the property sellers research guide, lots of things that pertain to that. So that's the first thing that we want to focus on that side of the board. We then move to managing price expectation, not a big deal now, but will become a big deal going forward, particularly as mar markets start to tighten and believe you me, they will be tightening. And as those markets tighten, it'll be the agencies that have an understanding of how to get the sellers to lower their expectation. Now, I just went through this with a couple of salespeople, again, with some leaders that are on this uh, presentation and listening to this presentation right now. And I just showed them how to actually set up. So often these salespeople, they wanna, even when they're going to auction, they want to see what happens in the room. And I say, look, always, always be sowing a seed. Always be hypothetically getting these in place. And the way we work those is fairly steady um, with the R2S, R2S standing for reduce to sell. You just put the property up there, as you can see, which actually that little balloon's got in the way. But basically, you just put now, will be, and the result. So this actually comes off the back of a sales meeting. You have the property address up there. Now that would be its current asking price. 
will be will after the team meets and the team contributes we arrive at a number that the property has to be an asking price for in order for it to sell and then the result that sits up there over here in the cooking side now this is something i'll talk about at a later date or expand on but that you can control negotiations and you can rather than have protracted negotiations you can have retracted negotiations that operate basically over a seven step process i don't have time to go in that process but it is important that in public view when a property when there's interest developed into a property it is put up into this section you then write the asking price or the expected price that the buyer might be looking to make an offer at so what they're going to be I guess commencing negotiations that you can put that number up there or what even the salesperson thinks they'll start at. Then there's a line on the other side, we then basically put what the owner's expectation is or what they'll accept. And then clearly we can see where we're at and where we need to get to. And then all of those steps are on a visual display. This is important because you can see what sales you have coming in, what activity needs to be done around getting those out of the cooking list and into the results section and well and truly on the way the next section as we move into a course are each of the office targets and results so we just simply want to know most importantly this number at the top this is important for you as a sales team leader stock on hand is the total number of listings that you have live and out in the marketplace I know for many agencies, they have a lag between the property being listed before it goes live. You could write that number, this side and the, the other number. So these are the ones that we've got on hand, but this is the actual number that we've got live. The important one is the one that you have live. I can tell you that you can almost inspect with no problem whatsoever to be selling somewhere between 20 and 40% of your stock on hand on a monthly basis. The rest, typically have to be managed but again you want that number up there so you know how many properties you have on offering now if you've got 25 properties available and you've got a target of 35 sales it's fairly academic and this needs to be in clear view because you are measuring you don't have enough fuel in the tank to get you to the number of sales that you want then of course it's just broken down with individual sales people so we go through you know, their listings, their individual sales, their individual R2Ss, so the properties that they are reducing and controlling around expectation. I won't go into performance points here. It beggars too much explanation. But those of you that come along to see I'll show you how that works and how that can even itself out as typically, especially I should say, as we run that correlation of what we call the FIBs, the Functionally Interdependent Bonus Scheme which affords more equitable percentages being paid to salespeople. So those are the targets as they roll through for each individual on listings, on sales, on the R2S, and then of course uh, on performance points. Then we get down to this section on the left in the middle, preemptive control. This is one that I spent a lot with talking about to the salespeople, uh, to the sales team leaders, I should say just this week in setting up on a monday and then setting up on a daily basis so we're just basically saying to the sales people each of them individually each day whether we come into the office and greet them as they arrive or we're texting it off to them what have you got on today and this has a direct correlation to a result a result simply being a new listing or or a re-signed listing with the same terms and conditions signed up that's a result a new sale started, so advised or agreed to and contracts all sent out or put under contract or into a cooling off period, I should say, or a sale that's gone from being in a contract or advised to unconditional, that is also a result. An R2S, a, a point where the property is reduced in expectation to the point that we know will sell the property, that's also a result. You can, if you like, count the, the uh, business of a, of, a, of a for sale sign or even a promo sign being put on a property as a result, because I believe that's good presence in the marketplace and this brings listings in if you choose to do it. 
And all of those constitute a result. And what we want to get salespeople doing when they come into the office each day is forecast the result that they're working on. That tells me that they're focused on what they're focused on is leading to a result. And if they can't write something up there, then we have to jump in as a leader and recalibrate their focus so that they are actually working on productive stuff moving forward. And then last, but by no means least, and probably the most important thing in the middle of today's results. Now you can see there, we say, this is the juice. This is the major focus. This is what we want to see happening. Now I had as a barest of minimums inside the real estate teams that I've worked with that we do not, and that was what the MBG H stands for, nobody goes home unless we've got a minimum of one result into the office. As my team started to grow and we started a faction and have separate teams, then each team actually had to have as the barest of minimum one result. If you get really good at it, it's the same thing that I push with my real estate rock stars. I tell them that they've got to get a result a day individually, a listing, a new sale started, a sale gone unconditional, or at least reducing a property down so that it moves out. All of this constitutes, you know, as the word says, their steam, control, it affords you the control that you need inside your team. So I can tell you, this is the most important factor. It's the beginning. You put the scoreboard up, you make it very clear where we have to go to. So I just, what I didn't tell you about there was back when you saw the target is in um, green and the result in red. And a lot of people have said to me, why are they that colored? Don't ask me why, maybe I'm superstitious. That's just the way it is. Do it in different colors and you'll probably suffer the fate of not getting it right. So there it is. Please get the scoreboard up. It begins with that. I then put the targets up. I then am focused very heavily on the results. Of course, there are some discernible difference. Obviously, a goal is more important. The goal is conservative, whereas the target is set around the BME. We've talked about this before. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. Get your control board in place. Start playing the game. Start measuring where you're at in order uh, against your expectation. And you will see that you not only start to produce, but you will also begin to progress. My name is Mark Dwyer. I'd love to talk to you more if you are on here and looking to take better control, more proactive control of your sales team, you can reach me or at uh, mark with a K at corporatemanager.com.au. Or of course, you can call me on plus 61-410-592-165. And I hope to see you next week. Cream and steam, it all alternates each week. Those of you that are principals or directors managing a business, I look forward to seeing you online uh, next week with Cream Confer.